Welcome, welcome everyone to worship this evening. Uh, special welcome to any visitors among us. I am very glad to also welcome those worshiping online and on channel 987 later this week. We are glad you are tuning in. I'm Pastor Amy Welshley, and I'm thankful that we get to be together today to worship our Savior, Jesus Christ. We would love to connect with you, and so feel free to send us an email, or here in the pews, you can fill out the information card in your pew back and give it to an usher later. Today is Trinity's, we are celebrating all the projects that we have accomplished in these last couple of years. And we really wanna show off these great upgrades that have happened here. So, to begin. Over the past two years, the property ministry team has accomplished and overseen a lot of big projects, like a new roof, new boilers, new windows, new gutters, an automatic door off the parking lot for accessibility. Recently, they reorganized our supplies so that staff, Sunday school teachers, and volunteers can access and use what we have for Trinity. You wouldn't believe all the places we were storing crayons, glue, and cotton balls. So many cotton balls. They relocated the nursery away from the outside door and closer to the sanctuary by switching it with Julie Verva's office. The visitation office is open. Kitty's office was revamped out of a labor of love and a need to get rid of 20 year old carpet. We completed this project during the lift trip as a surprise for her. I am really very proud of all the work that this small group has been doing and everyone who has lent a hand in one way or another. Um, I, people have come to clean with Stephanie Barron, to, um, I don't even know, fall cleanup day, spring cleanup day, all kinds of ways people have helped. So we really owe these, this group a debt of gratitude. And it is a small group who does faithful work. So please, the next time they invite you to a cleanup day, say yes, <laughs> lend a hand, help them out. Uh, I get this question often. I want you to know that many of these projects were funded from past financial donations given specifically for major upgrades. Now we're focused on upkeep and we appreciate any amount that you can give into the general fund. Those offerings, they really go for the non-glamorous things around here like snow plowing and heat and salaries, but not any more cotton balls. We never need to buy another cotton ball. It's those offerings though that are really needed right now so that we can keep on doing the good work we know that God is calling us to do. Okay, this week in worship, the Gospel of Matthew is bringing us into Holy Week and we will remain here until the end of the church year at the last part of November. In just the few days between Jesus' triumphal entry on Palm Sunday and the Last Supper, he does a lot of ministry, teaching, healing, and talking in parables. When he faces opposition, he responds with questions of his own. Today, Jesus asks you how you know if someone is doing his Father's will. You can judge it by the fruit that they bear. Now, we will begin worship by giving thanks for the upgrades that we're celebrating, also known as fruit. <laughs> we gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh God, thank you for the dedication and hard work of the property ministry team and all who helped get these projects done. For countless hours, they spent getting bids, meeting with contractors, crawling through spider webs, polishing pews, draining radiators, and writing reports. We give you thanks. Their work reflects your glory. Stir us up, all of us, to be responsible for this place and its upkeep. 
Make us faithful stewards of this property. In this place, people are fed physically and spiritually. Community is built between both members and the wider community. Here, your children of all ages learn about your love. In this place, we worship you. May we always use your blessings to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let's pray together the prayer of the day. Lord of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Ezekiel 18. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O Israel, house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord of God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn them and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read the bold print when it comes up. Um, this will be from Philippians 2. If then there is an encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of, of, of the same mind, having the same love, being in full of cord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied by himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson comes to us today from Matthew, the 21st chapter. 
When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching, and they said, by what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he'll say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say from human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first son and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said to the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So five years ago, I planted a grapevine at my house, just this little stick of a thing with a few grape leaves coming off it. And when the shoots came, I helped them get to the trellis and watched them grow. No fruit that first year, but I figured that was to be expected. The next year, I pruned off the dead bits, and that thing took off. Still, no fruit. But year three came, and it went gangbusters. I finally had grapes to make jelly, 11 pounds of grapes. I measured, I mean, I weighed them, and I was so thrilled. I sent photos off to my sisters, and I waxed poetic on social media about my beautiful grape jelly. I was so proud. And my sister, who has a very green thumb, asked me, of all people, what's your secret? <laughs> Oh, I was so honored, and I blithely just said, well, you just plop it in the ground and neglect it for three years, and voila, we laughed. <laughs> but to be clear, I was telling her the truth. My care for the vine was and still is occasional pruning, letting God water it when it rains, and thinking about jelly, making it, eating it, giving it away as Christmas gifts. I have yet to consult a book about how to care for the grapevine. I haven't even bothered to ask advice from anyone who has their own grapevines. And you know what? That dang vine has not produced a grape since. <laughs> I realize now that the fruit I harvested two years ago wasn't because the vine had matured, but it was because that's what grape vines occasionally do, even if they have been neglected. I planted it, and I did not tend it, but I sure took credit for that fruit. I'm hopeful, though, because there is still time for it to become something strong and hardy. There's still time, so long as I take the time to do the work. This is the good news of our readings today. Have hope, because there is still time. Now, I know that hope is not the first thing you think of when God says in Ezekiel, I will judge you. Hmm, not so much that. But God's judgment, like God's law, is meant for our good. 
God is not demanding perfection. Rather, God is looking at the fruit we bear. The life God gives you is connected to the lives of others. And how you live your life impacts the people around you. And that's the fruit. Then what does God want the people to do? What is this righteousness God is after? Well, it gets very specific in the part of the reading we skipped over. I'll sum it up. God says that they are to honor their neighbor and love their neighbor, not oppress people, forgive debt, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, execute true justice between contending parties. That's how the NRSV translates that. God, who freely gives life and love and mercy, expects each recipient to give life and love and mercy in return. That's the fruit. And they don't like it one bit. They cry out against God, unfair! Is it? Is it unfair that God, who has given blessing upon blessing, wants the people to do more than complain about his unwillingness to punish people? Is it unfair that God wants them to bear fruit in their lives? It's why God laments, why will you die, my people? After all you've been given, why won't you live? But that passage ends with great hope. Have hope. Turn, repent, and live. In Jesus' parable, we hear this again. There is still time. He asks, which of the two did the will of his father? And we know that, right? It's an easy one. We know that the son who walked the walk did the will of his father. He didn't just talk the talk like the brother did. No, the one who initially refused to work but then went into the vineyard to work, got the work done. He's the one who followed the will of his father. Perfectly? No. God's not worried about perfection. This son repented and lived. Have hope, because there is still time. And for even more hope, the Apostle Paul tells us God is at work in you, enabling you to live out his good purpose. That is, the Spirit moves in us. Not only is there time, there is power in the Holy Spirit, energy, possibility to live the life of someone who belongs to God. And thank God that there is time. Because, friends, we all know that it takes work to live the life of righteousness that God expects. We need time because it is hard for us to align ourselves with God's way in a world that resists it. Forgive debt? What does that mean for student loans? Feed the hungry? Even if it seems like the person is able to work? And what would happen to us if our faith makes us look like a bunch of radicals? If people start to question our authority or our advocacy because of our faith? Thank God there is time because it takes practice to live as God's people. Our faith, our alignment with God's will, it cannot just be planted and left to do its thing. This is not the Ron Poe Peel, set it and forget it product. It is a living, breathing faith. And we have work to do. But we have hope, too, because there is time.
Knowing that God gives us life and love and grace, we pray for help and healing of the church, creation, and our neighbors. When we pray for people on our church prayer list, you're welcome to add the names of those people you're praying for. Now let us pray. Bless your church, O oh God. Unite our hearts and voices with Christians in all places. Make us advocates for the oppressed so that the world will know your life and love and grace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Inspire us to heal your creation that those who come after us will also experience the wonders you have made. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Keep us working to feed the hungry and clothe the naked. May our actions inspire mercy in mayors, governors, the president, and all leaders. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Bring forth relief and healing, Lord. So, so many are suffering. Send us to be a gentle presence to those who are lonely, grieving, and imprisoned. We pray for the healing of Eric, Clarence, Sue, Olaf, Rick, Nora, Pat, Jen, Drew, Devin, Jim, Sue, and those we name before you now. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Thank you for the property team here at Trinity and all their work. Inspire all of us to give our time to the care of the church. The building, fellow members, and our neighbors. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. With you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Let us pray. God of power, God, God of plenty, plenty, all things belong to you. you. We bring, we bring your, your gifts, gifts to the table that, that all might be fed. fed. Form, Form us into the body of your, of your beloved, Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior. Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your name. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. 
We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bless you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthened by this food, Send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We have a lot of announcements, of course. Um, I was gone last week, and so I know the tidings came out, and I hope you read it thoroughly. Save the date if you are interested in attending the women's retreat with Kitty and Julie. That is happening on November 4th and 5th, and there is information about registration in your tidings. Um, a Cup of TLC meets this Wednesday at 11 a.m. That is a luncheon and devotional time and communion for folks who have some difficulty getting around. If you want to uh, have, you know, give us a name of somebody that you think that might be good for, we would love to have that. Um, there is something. Oh. We are going to be welcoming new members in November. And so if you have recently joined Trinity again, <laughs> I'm looking at Terry, um, or if you're interested in joining, please let me know. So, all right. Friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace. God is at work in you.